All right, so an official hello to everyone joining us today for our January Check It Out. And uh, my name is Samantha Bowers. I'm the consultant for continuing education at the State Library of Iowa. And I am joined today by Janae jackson Doring, our youth services consultant, who is going to tell us all about exciting new books from January that came out at the start of this new year. Lots of exciting titles, I am sure. Uh, Janae popped up here a few minutes ago to tell me that uh, she had completely taken over the table downstairs um, with things to show you. So let me also mention that if you're watching this live, you should see Janae's video along the side of your screen and um, a small little double bar in between uh, her video and her slides. So as she's holding books up, you should be able to resize her video so you can see pictures bigger if you want to. Uh, with that being said, Janae, I will turn it over to you and uh, start working on attendance here. So thanks everyone for joining us. Are you guys able to see the screen? Slides look great. Um, what does it say? Board book roundup. Okay. I am trying to get it switched around. So bear with me, guys. I am so sure, sure. No problem. I was... Uh, seeing in the chat, a lot of people responding about comfort books. So uh, throw into the chat here as we go along, what are some of your comfort books? If you have a book that you revisit, because it's like the equivalent of uh, of mashed potatoes and gravy or, uh, oh, Harry Potter. Yes, The Hobbit. Oh, thanks, Laura. Now that's my language. Let's see. What other comfort comfort food books? I know everyone's got one. I suspect everyone has one. Dragonlance Chronicles. So I can tell that you guys are youth services people too, because no one said like Jane Eyre, something by Charles Dickens. <laughs> All right. So let's see where we. I'm trying to get it to play. And with Chronicles me. of Narnia, another definite favorite of mine. I think this one might be stuck. Oh. Still on the third. Did you have a monitor frozen? Do you want me to pull up the slides and I can page through them as we go? Would that be better? That might be good. Okay. Because it's it's frozen. Oh, fun. Well, I hope we don't lose your video. If we do, we will get you back. All right. Let me see. View full screen. And I will take over the share. Okay. And I'll push stop share. I got it. Okay. All right, are you guys seeing the slides now? Okay, they are seeing them, awesome. Excellent, okay. Thank you everyone and pardon the technical mishap on my part. Um, good morning everybody and welcome to Check It Out and happy, happy new year. And Sam, if you could go to the next slide. Awesome. Thank you. My name is Janae Jackson Doring. I'm the Youth Services Consultant for the State Library of Iowa. Um, there is my contact info at the um, bottom. So if you have any questions, concerns, uh, items that you need help with as far as programming or summer reading, or if you'd like me to come visit, I do bring lots of books with me to give away. Um, please feel free to get a hold of me either through phone or email. Um, email works best because I I write a lot of emails, um, so please get a hold of me. Um, the picture that you see to the right of your screen is of my cat Aslan. <laughs> he is uh, 17 and a half. He'll be 18 next month, and he was sitting on my lap on Friday, and he was helping me read Grady Hendrix's new horror novel, How to Sell a Haunted House. Um, so far, it's pretty good. It's been one of my favorites so far. Um, so that is a picture of my lovely furry friend who wanted to help me read. Um, so what is our plan today? Today, we're going to talk about board books. We'll have our board book roundup. We'll have picture books, early readers, story time standouts. What do I mean by story time standouts? That those are books that you can use for story time. Um, so I come across with a lot of different books and I like to select books that'll help you guys with story times. Then we'll go to chapter books, middle grade books, young adult, what I'm reading, and finally giveaways and upcoming events. So let's get started. 
Okay, so we have our board book roundup. And with our board book roundup, we have lots of books to show you. Um, this first one is called Oink, I'm a Pig by Meryl Rainey. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm gonna hold it up here for you. This is a fun rhyming board book for kids and it teaches animal sounds. So the first spread, cock-a-doodle-doo, I'm a rooster, wake up, I say. Moo, I'm a cow. I chew all day. And then it says, Nay, I'm a horse with speedy legs. And then we've got a hen. Bark, bark. I'm a hen. I lay the eggs. And it goes through with the dog. So the dog is saying, woof, I'm a dog. I run these grounds. And then our friend, the pig, the pig who rolls around in the ucky mud, ucky, ucky mud. And then we have our farmer that says, yeehaw, welcome to the farm. It's an adorable board book. Um, there's a hole cut at the top. So it's cute for kind of like a I spy peekaboo um, book for preschool or toddler. Um, so great to learn about farm, farm and farm animals. This is Oink, I'm a Pig by Meryl Rainey. The next book I'm going to talk about, these are my favorite. I don't know if I'm, if I can, if you guys can see that. I might just have to hold it just like this. Um, this is called, We're Going on a Bear Hunt, My First Shapes. So this is a series of these books. So there's ABCs, one, two, threes, but this is a very simple um, board book that teaches shapes. So it's usually one word on a spread. So this one says circle. And then the kids can trace the circle or the shape with their finger. So circle, there's a square that they can that they can trace with their fingers. Triangle, rectangle. The other cool thing I like about this series, especially with this book, it has the shape in the top left corner of the board book. It goes through and shows a heart. And then it says, look for shapes all around you. So then we have a star, a diamond, and an oval. Um, very bright, very colorful illustrations. Simple, fun board book. Um, I hope you get to pick this up. We're going on a bear hunt, my first shapes. The next board book I have is called Brush, Brush, Brush. I'm gonna try to move that over. That way you guys can see. This is by Douglas Florian, and this would be a very, very cute um, board book if you are having a dentist story time, a very simple, uh, this is a very simple board book with simple repetitive text. So it says, brushing teeth is fun, fun, fun. After dinner is done, done, done. Toothpaste on the toothbrush, or toothpaste on the brush. Brush, brush, brush. Take your time. Don't rush, rush, rush. So it's going through showing children how to brush their teeth, how to put toothpaste on the toothbrush. Um, brush each, each place you chew, chew, chew. And outside and inside, chew, chew, chew. I like the diversity in this book. It's teaching kids brushing up and down, down, down. Moving the toothbrush round, round, round. Brushing to the left and right of the teeth. And now your teeth look bright, bright, bright. And you brush your tongue. And of course, make sure they spit out in the sink. <laughs> um, but it's just a nice board book to teach kids about brushing their teeth, healthy teeth. Again, great to pair with a dentist for a dentist story time. So this is Brush, Brush, Brush by Douglas Florian. This book, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Hello World series. Uh, this is by Jill McDonald, and she covers a lot of different concepts in these board books. I really like using these board books. When I was a youth librarian and working with preschool um, classes and daycares, they would come and talk to me and say, hey, I need books about this topic, this topic, this, this topic. 
So that way I can explain it to my preschoolers. Um, this series is a great series. This book in particular is called Snow. And I love the fact that it has beautiful illustrations, very simple text on a spread. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna try to get that as close as I can for you guys. But um, it talks all about where snow comes from. So, um, so it says snow starts with cloud, starts in the clouds as water vapor, which is a gas. So it's very simple, basic sentences that preschoolers could read to their kids or talk about the pictures, about the different kinds of snowflakes, which is very beautiful. Talks about what a blizzard is because Kids don't understand what a blizzard is, but this is a nice way of explaining what a blizzard is. It talks about um, what you wear in the snow. So this would be a great way to have those conversation starters with preschoolers. Well, what do you see? What are they wearing? Uh, what are they playing with in the snow? And of course, snowballs. Who doesn't love making snowballs and snowmen? So bright illustrations, bright colors, simple text that preschoolers and uh, preschool teachers can work with to help with their students. Um, there's lots of books in this series. So definitely pick up The Hello World, Snow by Jill McDonald. And finally, um, this just came out this month. This is uh, My First Brain Quest, which they always, I remember they used to have the kind of the intellectual card games for kids. Um, but now they're moving into board book series. So this is my first brain quest, ABCs, a question and answer book. I'll hold that up for you guys right there. And the cool thing about this book, it goes through all the letters of the alphabet, but the kids really have to look and see um, what other things are happening in the picture. So it'll say at the top, G, G is for gorilla wearing glasses. H, hippos with hearts. So a caregiver could read the story to the child, but then also there's these questions at the bottom. So for the G spread, what is the gorilla doing? What color are the glasses the gorilla's wearing? What else begins with the letter G? So it's really getting kids to think more about what they're seeing and making sure that they're answering questions. Um, this is the ABC book. There's also a shapes one and a colors one as well. Um, so definitely pick up the My First Brain Quest ABC question and answer book. All right, Sam, can we move to the next set of slides? We are gonna move right into picture books. So changing gears here. Um, this book that I have in my hand is called Chloe's Lunar New Year. And this is by Lily Lamott, and it's illustrated by Michelle Lee. And this story is about Chloe. Chloe and her family are getting ready to um, celebrate the Lunar New Year. So readers in this story will learn about the traditions of Lunar New Year. So in her family, that means getting rid of the of old things and welcoming in the new. So in the book, they are they are cleaning the house. They are getting rid of old shoes and buying new shoes for their kid for the kids. And I'm going to pull that up right here. So there they are. They're they're cleaning the house. They're they're going through their shoes, getting rid of old shoes and buying new shoes. They're setting the table for their for a big feast. So there's Chloe setting the table and her brother's playing with the chopsticks. All my tabs here, my fun tabs. They're cooking fish and noodles. They have fish eyes. And let's see. They're cooking dessert here, a very yummy dessert. And also Chloe, 
I don't know if you can see that. Okay. But Chloe writes a letter to her deceased relative and she puts it in a red envelope. Um, red symbolizes good luck and fortune and uh, prosperity. And so then all of her relatives come to eat and feast. And there they are feasting. See that? Okay. And at the very end, it says, happy reunion dinner, Ama. And you can see Chloe's letter is sitting at kind of a, um, a little mural for her deceased loved one. And in the back of the book, there's an author's note and there is a recipe. I'm gonna, let me see if I remember right. There is a recipe for a fortune cake recipe. So this is a sweet tale. It shows the customs and traditions with celebrating the Lunar New Year. So that is Chloe's Lunar New Year. Next book we have is The Bird Book by Steve Jenkins and Robin Page. This book simply is a nonfiction picture book that is all about birds. If you have kids that are very interested in about a bird's wingspan, how big they grow, what kind of eggs they lay, this is the book for them. Um, I'm gonna pull this so it has detailed pictures. This is what is a bird. So it has facts about all different kinds of birds, their beaks. And let's see, this is bird senses. The one thing I really, really also appreciate about this book, actually two things. I remember when kids would ask about extinct birds, like what birds are what birds are extinct? How, how do I know they're extinct? It has a spread in here, not only about birds that are in that are in danger, but birds that are extinct. Because I know sometimes it's hard to find books about birds that are extinct. It also has a table in the back of the book with all different kinds of information about the birds featured in this book. So if you have bird fans or if you're just needing to update your um, bird section in your nonfiction section, definitely pick up the bird book by Steve Jenkins and Robin Page. Okay, we're gonna switch gears here and go to boldly go where no person has gone before. Um, I really enjoyed this picture book biography. It's called To Boldly Go, How Michelle Nichols and Star Trek Helped Advance Civil Rights. This is by Angela Dalton. And it's, excuse me, it's illustrated by Lauren Semmer. That's a misprint, it doesn't say Michelle Lee. It's by, uh, illustrated by Lauren Semmer. But this is about Michelle Nichols. She was the uh, Lieutenant Uhura on Star Trek. And it talks about her life growing up. She came from a wonderful family. She learned how to play piano. She played, uh, she actually danced, uh, was a ballet dancer. Um, but growing up, she faced a lot of racism. Um, her ballet teacher told her when she was learning ballet moves, uh, you'll never be a good dancer. Um, you'll never be a good dancer because they will not accept black dancers. Um, so she faced a lot of prejudice, a lot of racism growing up. She also was a singer and she traveled with Duke Ellington and performed with his band for a little bit. Um, she got the part of Uhura and she worked with Gene Roddenberry, who was the creator of Star Trek, to develop the role of Uhura. Um, but a lot of things happened. Um, case in point, she went to go pick up her fan mail from her fans and they wouldn't release her fan mail to her because she was black, which shocked me because, I mean, she's a well-loved, was a well-loved character on that show. Um, she also wanted to quit the show because of so much, um, the racism that she was facing. And she really wanted to develop, to develop her character. And Jean Roddenberry said, no, please think about it. And also someone else encouraged her to stay on the show. I'm gonna show you real quick. That's a picture of her trying to receive her fan mail um, and being told no, that she couldn't have it. 
Um, and that's her after discussing the role with Jean Roddenberry that she wanted to quit. But while she was attending an event, someone wanted to meet her. And they were like, you've got to meet this person. They, they're really interested in um, meeting you. And the person that wanted to meet her was Dr. Martin Luther King. And so there she is meeting Dr. King. And she told Dr. King that she wanted to quit the show. And he said, no, please, you can't quit the show because other Black children are looking to you. They're looking to see what they can become. And so based on Dr. King's insistence, she stayed on the show. Um, even though her lines were cut, um, she still stayed and she made a big impact. Um, this is a beautiful illustrated picture book biography, beautiful illustrations, a great story. I would give this to fans of Star Trek or fans that just want to know about um, the character. Um, so that's To Boldly Go by Angela Dalton. All right, we're going to move right ahead to our Sesame Street. This is called All About Bus Drivers. This is a series, a nonfiction picture book series from Learner Publishing. I'm going to pull my notes down a bit so that way I can see. And this is by Brianna Kaiser. And this is a book that just basically teaches kids all about all different kinds of bus drivers. So it has one to two sentences on a spread and it shows children riding the bus. It shows what a bus driver does, um, how they drive city buses as well as school buses. And it shows how kids can stay safe on the bus. I love the fact that it's inclusive. It shows a child riding the bus and using a wheelchair ramp. So very simple sentences, simple, simple text. It has also the Sesame Street characters involved as well. And this is part of the Sesame Street Community Helper series. So they have all kinds of books. I, it's uh, all about bus drivers, all about firefighters, doctors, the mailman, nurses. Um, so this would be a wonderful collection to add to your nonfiction section. And it'd be great to recommend to preschool daycare teachers. Um, so make sure you grab All About Bus Drivers by Brianna Kaiser. And we're gonna move to the next slide. This book is called American Story by Kwame Alexander. And it's illustrated by Dare Coulter. This book has received five star reviews. Kirkus, Publishers Weekly, School Library Journal, Booklist, and Hornbook all highly recommend this book. Um, it is a powerful non nonfiction book. Uh, it's told in lyrical verse. And it's basically a teacher trying to teach her students about the story of slavery. Um, let me show you a couple pictures. The, the illustrations are just very powerful. Um, so you have images, this images of African-Americans in shackles to the kids in the classroom. So it balances out. So you have pictures of images of slavery and then it fast forwards to the children that are in the classroom and how you know is that each spread when the children are in the classroom, it has this yellow background. But the text says, but you can't sell people. How do you tell a story about slavery? About sly men from cold places, scheming and laughing on tall ships, while people shackled below, crammed in small hot spaces, cry and sometimes die. Again, this is a very powerful book. It is a necessary book to talk about slavery. Um, I thought it was, I thought the the topic was handled very well. Um, the illustrations are the paint the just the colors are just eye catching. It's I'm gonna pull some more too. They really really do hit you hard, um, especially this one about the young man who's picking cotton and he really wants to read. And then you have the child here 
that is, that is reading, even though he wants to read. It is beautiful. It is moving. Um, if you get a chance, please pick up this book. It is an American story by Kwame Alexander and illustrated by Derek Coulter. Next book that I have is called We Are Here. I'm gonna pull my notes. And this is by Tammy Charles and illustrated by Brian Polier. This one is, again, with the beautiful illustrations, it's, it's affirm, I call it an affirmation book because it's giving African-American children positive affirmations to say, yes, you are here. You are meant for this world. Um, beautiful illustrations, simple text. I loved it just because of the positive affirmations it gives young children. It says, because you and me, we have always been heroes. The same ones who had to, who sat to take a stand, the ones who ran so we could fly. It's no surprise, dear child. We are all of these things and so much more. I just love that line of that book. It's beautiful. Beautiful illustrations. This is the author that wrote All Because You Matter. So this is this would be a nice companion piece to that book. Um, so if you get a chance, please pick up We Are Here by Tammy Charles and illustrated by Brian Collier. All right, we're going to change gears here. Um, before I say anything about this book, I need to thank Teresa Snyder of uh, Garner Public Library. She actually recommended this book to me. And I read it, and it's super duper cute. Um, this is called Go Sled Go, and this is by James Yang. Um, this is a funny snow-themed picture book about a young boy on a sled riding down the hill. And this is not just your typical uh, sled ride, sleigh ride, excuse me. He says, oh, snowman, no. So he's on the sled but he runs into several different things on his way down the hill. So he runs into a snowman. He runs into a moose. He runs into fox and penguin. There's the penguins. He knocked down all the penguins. So they're sliding down this hill and they're sliding so fast. Stop, sled, stop. And I love this part. It just goes, they go flying in the air. Super duper fun, super cute. You could have some fun sound effects with that. And they're flying. There they go. And they fall and they land. They land face first into the snow. Plop, plop, plop. And after their fun ride, someone says, a little boy, he says, who wants cocoa? <laughs> and then they all go inside for cocoa, if you guys can see that. And the little boy says, shall we go again? And they all say, no. <laughs> so it's super fun. One to two words on the spread, very fun, very engaging. Um, you could have a lot of fun sound effects with this. Um, so this is Go Sled Go by James Yang. Okay, our next book is Abuela's Super Quepa. I'm gonna pull my notes. And this is by Ana Siquiera, and it's illustrated by Elisa Chavari. So this book is about our young friend here, Luis. Luis loves to spend his Saturdays with his abuela, his grandmother. They love to pretend they're superheroes. The other thing that they like to do, they like to have milkshakes every Saturday. Um, Luis has a young sister and he's like, oh, I don't want you joining our fun. It's just grandma and me time. Um, 
But the sad thing is, is Abuela gets sick and she gets so sick that she can't spend time with Luis and her sickness and lands her in a wheelchair. So she's unable to go on adventures with Luis and wear the cape. Um, he always said the cape is meant for his abuela, grandma. But grandma says to him, you know, you need to have you make your own adventures with your sister. So then he's able to give her cape to his sister, Isabel. Um, this has bright illustrations. I'm going to pull another page here. Beautiful spreads. This is a bilingual picture book. So there are words in English and Spanish. So as you can see, there's a glossary of terms. So that way there's the English and Spanish terms. Um, but it's a beautiful picture book, very sweet picture book. Um, so make sure you grab Abuela Super, Super Quepa. This is also written in Spanish too. So they have this in English and there's also a Spanish text as well. The next book I have is called The Bear Shared by Kim Norman and the pictures are by David Walker. Um, this is a very cute picture book. Um, if you have someone that just needs a calming picture book before bedtime, this would be a nice book to offer. It has that kind of a sing-song kind of rhyming text. And let me see, I'll pull up right here. This is the tree, as tall as can be, that held the nest built by the bird, that borrowed the hair that came from the lair the bear shared. So it has kind of that pattern, that rhyming pattern to it throughout the whole text. Um, but this, this bird, this set of birds, the mama bear and her baby birds, they find hair from the bear and the bear in the cave has three baby bears. And so the bird uses the hair to build them a lair, but then a storm hits and it knocks down their nest. And so there's the birds, one, two, three. So now they need to find a new lair to hang out in. And so they find the cave and they find the bear with the baby bears. And so then they all, the bears all share the lair with the birds. Um, so there they are all together in the lair. So beautiful illustrations, super cute. Make sure you grab the bear shared. And finally, my last picture book. This is The Kindest Red. This is by Ibtihaj Muhammad and S.K. Ali. And the art is by Hatem Ali. This is the sequel to The Proudest Blue. And this is about a young girl. And I'm going to pull this up real quick. So she, she and her sister are getting ready for picture day at school. And the mom has given the little sister, the little daughter, um, her red dress to wear. And that was her dress that she used to wear when she was a little kid. So she got her hair done. She has her earrings on and her pretty red dress. And she's getting ready to go to school for picture day with her sister. And I love this picture because um, this is the girl and her friend, Sophie. They're twirling around in their new dresses, ready for picture day. Um, I don't know how you guys felt when you guys got dressed for picture day, but it just kind of gave me memories about that. Um, but her teacher, Mrs. R Ms. Ramirez says, what kind of world do you want to live in? And the young girl says, I want it to be a good world. So then she draws a picture of what the world would look like to her. And she imagines a world of kindness. So just being kind to her friends, being kind to others. Um, I really love the illustrations in this book because it shows diversity, um, in inclusivity. 
So her world of kindness is helping someone to bounce a ball or Andre wanting to play with London. So we look for her playing tag. So making sure friends are included in games. It's also helping one another, especially Sophie with her red bow because it always comes apart. But right before picture day, or sorry, right before it's time for them to go to get their pictures taken, uh, she's very sad. And the reason she's so sad is because her sister, Asia, Asia and her don't match because Asia has her hajib on. So her friend Sophie pulls off her red sash so that way they can have matching pictures together for picture day. I just thought that this was the most, most beautiful thing I've seen. Um, so if you get a chance, please, please get the kindest read. I just love the messages of kindness in this book and it's definitely needed. Okay, we are going to move to story time standouts. And I'm going to move my big pile. <laughs> there are two that I found this month that are just worth your time for story time. Um, this is called Peekaboo, Who Am I? And this is an animal hide and seek with large flaps. So it says, Peekaboo, who do you see? And then there's like clues, there's visual clues for the kids to see that to see what the, to guess what the animal is. It says, I am a brown monkey in a tree. There's someone hiding here. Who do you think? And then you lift the flap. I am a flamingo and I am pink. So it goes through with different animals that they can guess. So there's an elephant, there's a zebra. And at the very end, it says, peekaboo, you have come to the end. Lift the flaps to find. I'm gonna lift this other flap. Lift the flaps to find all your colorful friends. This would be a good, good um, book for toddler story time. If you're doing a peekaboo theme, or an I Spy theme, this would be a perfect book for toddlers because it's it's short enough and it captures their uh, attention spans, especially with the large flaps. The next book is a starred reviewed picture book from School Library Journal. This is called Tiptoe Tiger by Jane Clark and it's illustrated by Britta Tetchentrum. This is a super cute interactive book. Um, I'm going to pull my notes real quick. I really love the interactive books for me when I do story time because it gets kids moving, it gets kids wiggling, because um, kids sit still a lot. Let's face it, they sit a lot and they need opportunities to move. Um, this book starts out, the sun is going down in the jungle, but Tara is right awake. All she wants to do is bounce and pounce. There's time for one more game to play before bedtime, but who will want to play? Look, can you see someone over there with beautiful, bright wings? So it's giving kids a chance to answer what, what kind of, what insect has bright wings? It's a butterfly and her friends. But will they want to bounce and pounce? Let's tell Tara to tiptoe quietly so she doesn't scare them away. Can you whisper, tiptoe tiger? So then it encourages the kids to whisper. It encourages them to flutter their arms up and down like the butterflies. Then they see a peacock. Then they have to stretch their arms wide like, the, like a monkey, or excuse me, like the peacock. And then they have to count how many owls they see. But this is a very good interactive book. If you want to get those wiggles out, this would be a nice book to have for story time for preschool. So this is called Tiptoe Tiger by Jane Clark. We're gonna move into our early readers now. And 
Do we have that slide? Perfect. This is called Vivi Love Science, Wind and Water. This is by Kimberly Dirty and Shelly R. Johans. And if you're not familiar, the Vivi Love Science series is all about this little girl named Vivi. And she loves anything science. She loves anything STEM. Um, so there are several books in this series. In this story, Vivi uh, volunteers to help at, at the beach to help with cleanup efforts. And there's a big storm that hits her town and there's a lot of damage done. So she wants to help clean the beach. Um, but she's wondering why the beach looks different than it did before. So the kids in this story and kids that are reading this book, they're going to learn vocabulary words like erosion, um, soil. And the cool thing about these books is that in the back, there are science experiments that kids can conduct with an adult. Um, this would be great to pair for like a STEM day or if you're having um, some STEM science activities with kids at the library, um, this would be a great series to add to your collection. Um, so that is Vivi Love Science, Wind and Water. Uh, this next one that I have is called Gigi and OGG, What's in a Name? This is also part of a series and it's written by Melissa Iwai. And it's about this little girl her name is Gertrude, but she likes to be called Gigi. Um, she is Japanese American. She loves pancakes and her dog Roscoe. Um, her middle name is Hanako and her Ojiji, her grandfather, calls her Hanako. Um, but she wants to go by something besides her baby name. Um, so she's just trying to find out which name should she go by? And her grandfather has trouble saying Geraldine. Um, but after an incident at the park and at the incident at the ice cream store where Grandpa Gigi takes her, uh, he starts to realize, okay, she likes to be called Gigi. Let's go use Gigi. Um, so it's a nice picture book. It'd be nice for your beginning reader section and diversifying your collections. So make sure you get Gigi and OGG, what's in a name. Okay, switching gears here because I'm moving as quick as I can. We're gonna go to chapter books now. So for our older kids, this is, let me pull this up. This is called The Lost Galumpus. I'm gonna try to move it, oops, there we go. I got to make sure the camera's right here. Sorry, guys. Um, this is The Lost Galumpus, and this is by Joseph Helgerson, and it's illustrated by Udana Lugo. Um, this is roughly for second through fifth grades. It's a funny chapter book series, or not series. Um, it's a funny chapter book, but it's about this woolly mammoth named Twigs, and Twigs travels from the past in a weird time travel situation um, he's from the, from the past, but he gets sent to a local park in Minnesota via time travel. And all these animals see twigs and they're like, what is he doing here? Why, why is he here? Um, Gilly the possum notices that this woolly mammoth is here. And the mayor, which is a raccoon named Mayor um, Crawdaddy, <laughs> weird name, funny name, um, the mayor and Gilly are tasked to figure out where this woolly mammoth came from and how to get him home. Um, there's a really mean red squirrel in this story. Um, and this red squirrel is not pleased with this woolly mammoth. And he's always just kind of contradicting the mayor and saying, well, you can't do your job right. I should take your job. Um, super funny, sweet story. So if you get a chance, pick up The Lost Galumpus by Joseph Helgerson. Moving on, we are moving to next. It is our graphic novel. This is Officer Clawson, Lobster Cop. This is by Brian Smitty Smith and Chris Giarusso. I'm going to show you that right there. Um, this is the start of a new series. So this takes place under the sea in Caper Cove. You have 
Officer Clossum, who's this big red crab, and this is his sidekick, Starina, the starfish. They help keep the underwater seas free of crime. But their, their lovely town is starting to pick up with more on the crime because all of these villains are working together to steal their lovely, um, their lovely donut shop. And it's called Kelpie's. Um, I love the illustrations in this book. It really does have that feeling of a uh, graphic novel. I love the neon colors. There's several instances of neon colors in this story. Um, this is a laugh out loud, funny graphic novel series. Um, so if you want something, if you have kids that want something other than SpongeBob SquarePants or Dogman, or I'm trying to think, uh, if you just want to give them something that has a little bit more sustenance and laughter to it, I would definitely recommend Officer Clossum Lobster Cop by Brian Smitty and Chris Gia Russo. So this next book, this last book came to me um, and I had never read it before until someone said, you really got to read this. Um, and I don't know if you're familiar with it. This is called A Rover Story. And it's written by Jasmine Warga. And it's about this robot named uh, Resilience or Rez. Um, he is being put together by NASA to go into Mars to collect samples of dirt. And he's being tested. His trainer is writing code for him. So that way he's learning code so that way he knows what to do. Um, but slowly this robot is starting to pick up human emotions. So he know, he can sense how the others who are putting him together are feeling. He can sense how they feel. He's picking up um, phrases that they say. And the person that is putting him together, she is spending so much time in the lab with him, putting him together, testing him, that she misses out on her daughter's soccer games. She's missing out on her daughter's life. Um, and the daughter's name is Sophia. And Sophia writes letters to this robot. Um, and you see her grow up from her time in elementary school all the way up to high school and college. Um, and then when resilience gets sent to Mars, um, he goes through a lot of trials he also falls down during during a storm in in space. Um, it's really moving because you don't expect a robot to have feelings. You're just expecting them to basically receive code and just do as they're told. Um, but you see resilience and you see him try to survive in Mars. And you see how Sophia, who she used to hate this robot because it was taking so much time up from her mother, you see her grow to love this robot and appreciate him. Um, so if you have not picked this up, please pick up A Rover Story by Jasmine Warga. Okay, moving on to middle grade. I'm going to pull more notes. I'm going with my notes. As, I'm sorry, I have to pull my notes up while I'm talking to you guys. And I do want to give you the 10-minute warning here, Janae, too. So I don't know if we need to fly, fly like the sun through these last couple or what you're thinking. We're gonna fly through it. All right, here we go. Buckle okay. up, folks. Yeah, definitely buckle up. Um, Super Teacher Project by Gordon Corman is about a young man who, he is a spitball champion and he's a prank master. And at the middle school where he goes to, um, he goes to spit a spitball at his homeroom teacher, Mr. Perkins, but he is stopped by the student teacher, Mr. Adapt. Um, there's something up with this with this student teacher. He is an expert at hockey all of a sudden for the girls hockey team. He's becoming the most popular student teacher in the school, but Oliver is not buying it. He knows there's something funky with this teacher. Um, this is a funny book. If you love middle school hijinks, um, if you have kids that just love mysteries, pick up the Super Teacher Project by Gordon Corman. Another great hit from them. We're going to move quick. <laughs> Next book is What Happened to Rachel Riley. This is an excellent book. 
This got star reviews on book list and book page. Um, this turns the boys will be boys excuse on its head. Um, Anna is a young girl who is Polish. She's a new student at East Middle School and the daughter of two lawyers. Um, she's quickly discovering that the middle school that she's going to, there's something not right. And more importantly, they, the students at, at her school, they don't talk about Rachel Riley. They don't care for her. She's a pariah. Ugh, don't talk about her to me at all. Um, so she gets assigned in her class, in her social issues class, a project. She could pick any project she wants to. And Rachel loves podcasts. She loves podcasting. She loves all different kinds of podcasts. So her assignment, she proposes to her teacher, is to create a podcast about what happened to Rachel Riley. Because there's an incident that everybody is hush-hush about with Rachel Riley, and no one wants to talk about it. So she goes to investigate through podcast entries, texts, and emails with other students and parents. You find out what happened to Rachel Riley and the way these kids face these boys with sexual harassment situations, how they're taking their power back. It was really cool to read. Um, so definitely pick up what happened to Rachel Riley. This was a fun book, uh, very good read, highly recommend it. Next book is Invisible. This is a graphic novel by Christina Diaz Gonzalez. I call this the breakfast club for middle grades um, because you have these one, two, three, four, five students that are put together in this situation. Um, their principal throws them together for a service project. And the kids have different identities, different ethnic identities. And they're not, they all speak uh, Spanish. And so you learn about, let's see, there's George, who's Puerto Rican, um, Nico, who's a rich kid who grew up in Venezuela. You have uh, Dayara, who's a tough girl who doesn't know how to read very well. Um, you have Miguel, who is a sports jock, but he's an artist and he really wants to pursue his art career. Um, they all get sent to do this service project in the cafeteria with the mean cafeteria teacher who I just wanted to smack. Um, but while they're doing their service project, they meet a young girl outside who's five and she's living with her mother in the car or in a van, excuse me. And so the kids, they sit, give her food and they, they basically try to do a good deed. Um, this was a really fun graphic novel to read and uh, just a moving one. Um, and when you when they get pulled into the office, you think all five of them are going to be in trouble. And the ending is kind of a really cool ending. So pick up Invisible. Hey, young adult, whoo, we're going to fly. All right. I have all my books here. The first one is One Last, one Last Shot. And that is written by Kip Wilson. It's a novel in verse. And I'm going to pull this up real quick. Grab my notes. There it is. This is about Gerda. She's a young woman, a headstrong woman that's growing up in Germany. And she goes to boarding school and she kind of reinvents herself and becomes more confident. Um, she gets involved with the leftist political movement in Germany. Um, and she also has a run-in with a Gestapo, and it really scared her. She thought she was going to be captured, but they let her go. And so she decides to move in 1933 to Paris to basically get away from the situation and not put her family in danger. And she flees to Paris and meets Andre, who's a photojournalist who is handsome. She falls in love with this individual, and she also falls in love with taking pictures. And she is sent to different parts of the war of the war to take pictures. Um, the way she passes, it's awful. I mean, it was just it was gut wrenching. Um, this is a beautiful novel, beautiful novel written in verse. Um, it is a wonderful book to read. There's an author's note, selected sources, and a glossary. Very powerful book. Make sure you get one last shot. Okay, we've got Wonder Cat Q-Chan. 
That is a teen manga. It's written by Sas- Sasami Natori. And that is about, it's a, this is a first in the series. It's about a young man on his way home and he finds this adorable white cat in a box. He decides to take the cat home and he names the cat Q-Chan. The cat is adorable. The cat wants to wear bow ties. He brings his owner his lunch because he forgot it on the way to work. Um, This is just a delightful manga series. There are seven books in this series, and the eighth one is coming out in August of this year. Super delightful, super cute. Make sure you pick up Wander Cat by Q-Chan. Or excuse me, Q-Chan Volume 1 by Sasami Natori. Okay, we have two for Tuesday. Two for Tuesday. Because these two are both by Holly Jackson, who is really hot right now. Um, This book, Five Survive, excellent book. This is very hot right now. It's about these five to six students that are in an RV. They're going on a spring break trip, but the tires, all six tires are shot out. And you have to find out who is hiding secrets. How they know they're being targeted is because they hear the person that's shooting at them saying hello you are not leaving this RV until you figure out what the secrets are. And this book was packed with a lot of secrets. It took it took it in the expected places I didn't think it was going to go to, but it was well done, well written. Um, the next book that is next to it is a novella that is coming out February 28th. That is called Killjoy. And I'm going to pull up that real quick. Uh, let me see. This is about Pip, Pip, who isn't keen on attending her friend's murder mystery party. Um, She reluctantly attends. It's a 1920s themed party and the pretend murder of fictional character Reginald Remy. It occurs on an island called Joy. So Pip has to find out the clues through this party. But as she's learning about the clues, she's realizing that this murder mystery party that's supposed to be a game, it's not a game. Um, If you have fans that love mystery and Karen McManus books, definitely pick up Holly Jackson. She is the hot author right now for Teen Mysteries. We're going to go next to hopefully Break Up From Hell. Break Up From Hell by Anne Davila Cardinal. Um, This is Miguela. She is a senior who just got into her dream university. Um, She's raised by a Catholic grandmother. Her mother died and her father abandoned her. Um, While she's with her grandmother at mass, she spots this really hot teen. I mean, Sam is hot. He is just super duper hot. And she's smitten by him. So she's doing all these things that she really shouldn't be doing. She's lying to her people she cares about. And she's starting to get these visions, kind of like end of the world visions. And she realizes why her grandma's really protective of her. And she learns about her past. And she learns about Sam, who happens to be a demon from hell. You're dealing with a lot of good versus evil. It's funny. It's quirky. It's creepy. Pick up Break Up From Hell. Whoo, Nine Liars. <laughs> we are moving. Nine Liars by Maureen Johnson. This got a starred review from Publishers Weekly. This is book five of the Truly Devious series. Um, this involves Stevie. Stevie's boyfriend, Dave, is in London in this book. And he invites her to visit him um, in London. But during her visit, she's introduced to an unsolved double mover cold, cold case involving nine friends from Cambridge University. And she's quickly realizing that the killer hasn't finished what was started back at an old case in 1995. Um, very powerful, fun mystery. If you enjoy mysteries, pick up Nine Liars. Okay, what I'm reading very quickly. I'm reading How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix, adult fiction. It's about this woman that goes home to her brother. Um, Their parents died in a car accident. And the mother used to have this uh, Christian puppet business. So she had all these puppets. And the daughter is realizing that these puppets are evil. These puppets can move. Um, Very creepy. Don't read it in the dark. Highly don't recommend that you don't read in the dark. Um, Very, very good book. Uh, Also, the other book that I'm going to start this week is called City of Nightmares. That is a teen novel. It's a new series, um, and it got a starred review from Kirkus. 
Um, this is described as Gotham meets interview with a vampire. Um, so the teen in this situation, she's 19. She's terrified of going to sleep because if you have a nightmare, you wake up and become whatever nightmare you dreamt. So in order to save herself, she teams up with this group called the, Re the Friends of the Restful Soul, which she's starting to think this might not be a good group to hang out with. It might be a cult. Um, it got a high review. I'm going to start it this week. I'll let you know how it goes. Um, March 7th, this book, third book called There Goes the Neighborhood has been getting a lot of big press. I just got this book literally today. I got two copies of it. And one of you is going to get another copy because I have two copies of it. Um, this is getting a lot of press. It's about a young girl who is facing, um, her name's Ray, and she is facing all these mom and pop shops that are leaving her neighborhood. They're leaving because all of these new new businesses, this gentrification is coming into her neighborhood and her and her two friends want to find a way to try to stop it so they can save their neighborhood. Um, I've been told it is a black comedy. So there's humor, there's humor, and there's also um, some drama mixed in. This is getting a lot of good reviews. It comes out March 7th for teens. It's called There Goes the Neighborhood by Jade Adia. All right, giveaways. <laughs> I have so many books now. I keep getting so many books and arcs that we are going to give away three prize pack books this month and February because I just keep getting so many books and they need to be in your hands. Um, so congratulations to the December winners, Mardine at Joyce Public Library and Llewellyn from Keck Memorial Library in Wapolo. Um, so I will be sending, I'll be picking three prize winners this month and next month. Um, you'll get a mix of books that I talked about. You might get some ARCs, some advanced reader copies. If you get an advanced reader copy, you can give this to a teen or a child, depending upon the book, um, or you can read it and then order it for your collection. Um, advanced reader copies cannot be put into the collect into your collection um, just because it's an advanced reader copy. But you are more than welcome to give it to a teen or give it to a child, um, and they cannot be put in book sale. So I just kind of wanted to make sure I say that. So, um, so hopefully your name will be chosen for a giveaway. And we can go to the next slide. Woo. Okay, we have Pop YS live events coming up. Um, on Wednesday, February 8th, we have Lisa Luke, who's going to be talking about how a bunch of stressed out rural librarians came together and impacted third grade reading scores. She's going to be talking about how she did that in her community. That's going to be from one to two o'clock on February 8th. And save the date for March 8th. We are going to have a very special presenter, um, Kathy Pazinski from Shawano County Library. She's going to present Dynamite Dozen. So she's assembled 50 programs for teens and tweens. And these she's going to teach you how to do it at your library to have them assembled and ready at the drop of a hat. And they can be created with 12 simple, inexpensive items. This is a program you don't want to miss. So that's Wednesday, March 8th. Register in Iowa Learns for both events. And, and if you have not signed up for the STEM fairs and summer reading summits, you might want to do that soon. Um, all of our STEM, let's see, for Central and Northeast and Southeast, our STEM fairs are full. They're, they're filling up really fast. Um, so make sure you come to the Summer Reading Summit and STEM Fair. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of information, free admission, no lunch provided. So just a heads up. Um, registration is still open on I Will Learn. So you still have time to join us for a lot of fun. It's going to be fun. I'm going to be there. Hopefully I see you there. And thank you. Oh, my goodness. I cannot believe I'm over by six minutes. Yikes. So thank you guys so much. I'm sorry if I spoke too fast. Um, I hope to see you guys next week, or not next week, excuse me. 
<laughs> hope to see you guys next month for Check It Out. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Woo. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Janae. Sorry, I was struggling to get links in chat and find my unmute button. But thanks, everyone, for coming, and we'll see you next time.